Miguel, you describe in your video being in public with your mum was a terrifying experience. Uh, I, I mean, I can absolutely relate. You know, the, the yelling, the screaming, the muttering, the talking alone, being in public is like, oh, my God. And you're assessing all the time. You're like, oh, okay, I'm in a mall and it's an open space. So if we have an episode here, everyone's going to see and that's that's yeah. death right? But like if you're in a supermarket, you can kind of uh, disguise things, you can kind of hide in an aisle and, and it can be a far more contained situation. What was one of your worst experiences? Out in public, I got really good grades on some sort of exam for the Catholic high schools in the area. I guess when you're in eighth grade, there was some test we take or, or something and we had to go in for a family interview uh, to be, because that's part of like getting the scholarship. So we went to a high school that I'm still nearby and we were there sitting in the, um, in the waiting room outside and mom was just, I don't know, really adamantly like, we're not talking to them or something and she didn't wanna go. And I was all dressed up, ready to be interviewed and thinking, oh, mom's going to be good because I really want this. Aren't I being a good boy? I, I got money for being really good at school. And she threw up a whole, you know, a whole episode about it, like yelling and everything. And I remember just being there crying, looking at the ground, Monica, my sister next to me, just, I don't know, feeling like this isn't fair. I, yeah. I just... I wanted to go through this process um, and yeah, feeling like wh when do I get my own stuff? I isn't this what I'm supposed to do? Like, isn't this one of my many jobs being a good boy in school and mom's just ruining it because she, she's so selfish, you know, oh. that's what I remember thinking. I, I remember just, just having people like walking by in the hallway, seeing me crying and like oh. seeing mom and dad arguing, like the worst, the worst. Right. Oh, I'm so sorry. You said something just now about, well, if I'm, I've, if I'm a good boy, then, you know, there are consequences and this is a good consequence, you know, when you're ruining it for me. I mean, it's, it's something that I felt when I was young. I was like, man, you're so selfish. Like it's like I even I I was terrible because I, I told my mom that I hated her because I didn't understand. And I, I, I think about it and my heart sinks because that's what happens really when you don't have proper mental guidance as well, because a lot of people just think that it's well, your mom's sick. So every resource has to be channeled toward your mum but yeah. what about everybody else I mean yeah. the kids they're really suffering I mean their their stability has been taken out like a rug from beneath their their feet right and everybody yeah. needs that person in their own way my father needed his wife so when I think of as a child saying I hate you it was my anger toward life yeah toward what I thought was just an unfair situation, like a very unfair fate for my family. I was like, but why Why did it have to be my mum? Yeah. Especially yeah. when you go to school and you see everybody and as a kid you think everybody else's life is just perfect and yours is yeah. the only one that's an absolute mess and you're a mess inside and you, you want that for yourself, you know, you want to be able to go to school with your parents in parent-teacher night yeah. and not fear that your mum's going to say something weird. I, I completely get that part of, of thinking, man, my mum's selfish. And it's the illness. Yeah. It's so hard even today, you know, even after talking to you, going to all the meetings, I, I still I still feel that way. I still wish she would go get help, you know? But yeah, I, I think back to little Miguel going to like friends' houses, seeing other people's parents interact with other friends' parents and be like, my mom's never, never going to do that. 
like that'll never happen and like knowing like oh, why is my mom so weird you know and just wishing wishing for that for myself and i remember like when i was at friends houses i i was like i i, I want to be really good so they can see like I'm doing good and you know maybe they'll maybe they'll compliment me and that'll feel really good because it's like I'm not gonna get that from from mom you know even though we had to grow up very fast and there was a premature exposure to so many things there was still an innocence you know seeking that recognition from another parent is because you you needed that from your mom your dad you know you needed it in your home now as adults you could understand the need that you had but as a child it's it's like fantasy overlaps with reality a bit yeah you know because I I remember I I used to wish that other people would adopt me which is really yeah the terrible thing I, yeah. I I think I was a terrible kid like in saying I hate you to my mom and wishing that I was adopted because you know in the end at my 43 years of age I've come to understand that our parents did the best they could but when you're young you don't get that in and I was angry at my dad and I was angry at my mom and they were doing the best that they could I mean our capacity to handle different situations is completely distinct. And some people run and some people stay and hack it out. And I get that now, but as a child, how can you process this if you, you don't even have counselling, you don't have yeah. therapy, you know, you don't even have a teacher that's like, oh, you, your grades dropped yeah. all of a sudden. What's going on at home? Like, can we, can we yeah. sit you down for a little bit? I think that's something that a lot of teachers, uh, especially in primary school, you know, because they're such important years. They're the formative years. And my brother, he's assistant principal in Sydney. Uh, he's a teacher. And we were talking one day, there was a child that I think he, he started hitting another kid. And straight away we said, yeah, something's going on at home. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I, I, yeah, I still wish that for little Miguel that like, I had been adopted with Monica, my godmother, the one who helps me out now, she, she wanted to adopt us because she knew how bad it was. But since mom was around, the courts wouldn't let her dad went to court, you know, to try and get custody. But you know, they, they always side with the mom if the mom's, you right. know, up and alive they're like like you were saying earlier you know the mom's important in 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 young children's lives but yeah I, I wish i was adopted or like i was saying when i go to friends houses it's like can i stay here the air is different here where it's like the weird tension and like waiting for stuff to happen and like it feels like this adult cares about like what i'm doing you know and I, I, I wish teachers did more. I remember having my own outbursts. How, how old was I? I don't know, third grade, fourth grade, around that time I had some outburst and teacher asked everybody to leave and me to stay behind. And she was like, oh, you know, sometimes when things are messy at home, you just need like someone to talk to. But uh, it, it never like, transpired into like okay now miguel there's a re formal recommendation to see a counselor or something just that one incident there was no follow-up i'm sure i was you know mad because of what was going on at home and then in high school i was having that's when my grades like you said just went down into the toilet i stopped caring i'm remembering in high school just feeling like why why care about the future i can't do anything right and mm. why think about the future i'll just do the bare minimum nothing matters uh and i really started giving up so there was this one english paper i think in my senior year on the great gatsby 
I was like, oh, I just need a little more time. So I forged a doctor's note with my father's signature and like an old eyeglasses prescription I had and like photoshopped it all together. And I drove to school and put the note in the basket and then just walked out and left. Uh, and while I was at home, I, I still didn't like get the paper done. And I was caught because my dad saw me walking around at home outside uh, before he left to go to work. And after it all came to light, nobody was like, I remember the principal was like tearing me out for it with dad there. And he was like, I don't know why this is happening. Your grades have been good. I don't know what's going on at home. Maybe drugs. I don't know. But here's the consequences. You're banned from prom uh, and you have to do all the assignments you missed while you were gone. And uh, if you don't turn in these, you're not graduating. And that was, that was awful. I didn't get to go to prom with all my friends senior year. And the worst part is nobody to be like, as I went to each teacher that I missed who was told about the situation, nobody was like, Miguel, what's going on, man? Like, something big must be happening that you've done this. You know, nobody was curious. And I, I'm still really bitter about it, you know, not getting to do that with my friends. I had to go, like, return my uh, tux and my shoes that I already paid for and rented. And I drove to my friend, my date's house to be like, I, I, I can't go, sorry. And I, I'm, I've, I've memory hold it. I, I don't know what I did that night instead. I'm sure I just like watch TV, stayed off the internet. So I can't see all my friends talking about what a great time they're having, you know, but, but yeah, I'm m mostly still mad at all those adults who weren't like, Hey man, what, what's going on with you, dude? You're, you're a good guy. T please tell me what's going on. I, I, I don't know if teen Miguel would have trusted. I, I hope he would have having somebody who feels like they care, you know, but yeah, like you're talking about just, just having an adult be like, what's going on? You know, something's weird here. And I wish, I wish somebody, somebody noticed. I can't believe that happened. All right. I can't believe that the punishment was so severe that you couldn't yeah. go to a prom. Not only the fact that they didn't ask you, hey, is something going on? Because I'm sure that the teachers knew you over many years. And then all of a sudden there's there's behavior that is not consistent with the person that you've proven yourself to be over the years. And then the grades dropped. Something had to have happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I love how right away it's drugs. That's the the default. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be drugs. But when you punish someone without even really trying to get deeper, what's going on, Miguel, and all of the teachers, and then you impose such a harsh punishment that that person will carry for their life. That's something that's for us in Australia. We do high school graduations. That's what everyone looks forward to in the senior years of high school. You know, everyone looks forward to getting dressed up because that's where you're headed. You're heading out into the real world and and um, and you're looking forward to that special night. I think that punishment was just over the top. Yeah. Even if they thought it was drugs, there was no like, you got to go get tested or like you got to talk to this drug counselor or maybe then I could be like, check my blood, you know, or, or something. Well, now they would they would have found weed maybe they would have stopped there but like <laughs> yeah but maybe yeah maybe i would have talked to somebody about like well this is what it's like at home and what was going on was around that time I, I i don't remember but i know it was in high school that's when we got the formal restraining order on mom because oh. she would like keep calling she would just keep showing up to the house unannounced and like wouldn't leave and she'd just be talking about her delusions at the door you know and and she wouldn't go and it, it had to stop it was so like bothersome and like i couldn't do anything the rest of the day after like she left 
I think she like lost her car and like was taking the bus or she just walked multiple towns over to get to the house and everything. So dad was like, yeah, we'll, we'll get a restraining order. And I'm mad at him because there was no like help there to be like, we're going to take this like very hard step of like cutting your mother out of our lives, you know, with this legal thing and no counselor, no support for me to like deal with, you know, the consequences of that, which is what I needed. So I'm sure just not doing school and, and all the anxiety is what was coming out, you know, in, in my senior year and in my grades and everything. And again, it, it just, it, it's like a feeling of like, yeah, not validating of like, don't, don't you care? You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I always keep thinking, I don't have any evidence to support it, but it's like, if, if I was a white kid, would, would they have cared more and brushed it aside less? I don't know. But like, nobody was there to be like, yeah, you're a good kid. Well, what's, what's going on? You what's know? really going on? Yeah. yeah. Because right now you said my mom would come and after she would leave and then I just couldn't do anything for the rest of the day. It, it, really absorbs your life and at some point you realize that because all of your energy is invested in surviving there's nothing left for anything else there's no. how how can you expect to seek good grades studying that involves concentration and to to be able to absorb any information the best uh, situation that you can be in is in a calm situation we were never calm it was always that ah, something's happening you know Alexandra Hewitt she had spoken to a a uh, therapist and the therapist described her childhood which is like our childhood similar to living in a war zone and it's true how can you have anything left to give mentally in school how can you thrive in school when you have this home life and it's so chaotic and painful and there can be there's nothing left yeah. how can you invest yeah. that in studying and getting good grades and and thinking about your future oh i want to study this and i want to do that when you have no guidance anywhere yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't care about my future. It was like, why? I, I just keep getting everything wrong. And on top of that, like friends and like worrying about girls and like puberty, right? Your brain's just surging with all the new hormones and, and everything else. And it's like, yeah. And then put on having a, a schizophrenic mom on, on top of that. It It's so hard. Yeah, just like running into her because we made the decision after dad got custody, we would do mom like every other weekend or on the weekends. And like, I didn't want to do that anymore either because it was so hard to like be around mom. I remember we like would just go to like a motel or a hotel and just stay inside and like watch TV. And like on one hand, this was like the perfect thing because like we're just alone and then we'll just stay in here and like exist until the clocks run out. You know, we'll go out, we'll buy food at the grocery, come back, eat there, just be quiet, say, don't say anything to upset her, just be there with Monica, you know? And on the other hand, it's like, I want to do other stuff on the weekends. I want to like go with my friends to like see rock shows or like go to like parties and like be, be with friends. And I don't want to be around mom because of how, how mad I am at her, you know? Mm -hmm. And so eventually we just stopped going to, going to see her. So when she would pop up, it was never like announced. And yeah. Just having her in my life again. Yeah. Like a war. It's like an explosion just appeared in front of me, you know? And it's like, it, it, my whole nervous system activates and it's like, how do I calm down? I just, like go to sleep what else what else am I supposed to do right you now yeah 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 it's it's also a way of like getting your getting yourself back to neutral it's it's very hard because it's so draining yeah. 
and because it's so draining, then you, you you feel this sleepiness that really overwhelms you. And like keep, keeping the secret, I didn't I didn't start talking about it till I made the video. That's that's a culmination of all the years of like, oh, don't talk about it or it's spoken about in hushed tones with the family. They didn't tell like friends about it or anything because who who would understand? It's weird. It's shameful. Don't talk about it. You know. So like the stress of like having to like keep it a secret or like when people ask you about, oh, how's your family? What are you doing for Christmas? You know, what plans do you have? And just having to like lie or like say something that's sort of true, like that, that's a burden also, you know? Oh, so many burdens that, that you carry. And I think that's one of the biggest ones where you keep it a secret and you can't tell anybody because there's a lot of shame as well in in admitting that you have a parent that's not functioning in society that that you know my mom couldn't work my mom in oh, yeah. the eyes of my dad's family my dad's family's chinese she was lazy it, it, and i love how simplified it just comes down to being lazy you know there's nothing else to it and that's painful. And so you just don't even talk about the situation anymore because, well, I'm not going to change your mind. You you know for a fact that she's lazy, which is not right, instead of yeah. trying to get information or talk to a psychiatrist. I mean, really, for, for my brother and I, there was no support. And that's that's so sad. I mean, we were there for each other and then my brother was – when he became a teenager, he started going out with his friends and and then that was great for him because the door and his friends, it just beckons, you know, it calls and who wants to be at home with a schizophrenic mum? So I, I took that on and went to great lengths not to talk about my mum's situation with anybody. I just would be quiet about it, you know. It was shameful to have a mum with a mental illness. And, you know, we're talking 30 years ago when there was really no psycho psychoeducation happening. Everybody back in, in those days was a loony, was a crazy person. And further back, you know, they have other terms that are really derogatory for people who have mental illness. So how are you going to say, oh, my mum... My mom has schizophrenia. Oh, your mom's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or they'd be like, oh, so you're crazy too, right? They'll turn it back on you. And like growing up, you just want to be the same as everybody else, you know? Uh, especially like coming from me and, and from you, I know, coming from parents who are immigrants to the country, you know? You just, you just want to fit in. And this is like the ultimate not... Right not fitting in you know we right. needed like safe adult safe profession safe medical mental professionals to be like this is this is what's going on you know this is how to talk about it yeah somebody to to validate us and we deserve that and they they didn't show up <laughs>